afternoon, everyone. Welcome to today's Park County Chamber of Commerce Meet the Candidate Forum. I'm Dave Crooks, President and General Manager of DLC Media. My company owns and operates six radio stations, including 104.9 WAXI here in Rockville. It's my honor to be the moderator of today's event. A reminder to those who are not registered to vote, you only have until next Tuesday to register, as early voting will begin a week from today, so do keep that in mind. I want to thank the uh, Park County Chamber of Commerce with a special thanks to uh, Heather Thompson for her work in organizing today's event. Also, uh, John Martin is here with Park Without Reverse. Uh, he's recording the event, and it will be available Sunday at parkwithoutreverse.org. And, of course, WAXI, we're trying to do a Facebook Live, and thanks to the solid signal we have here at Bridge 61 and Bloomingdale Home Telephone Company, I think we may be able to pull this one off today. So... Fingers crossed. Um, as a former elected official, I definitely want to take a moment to thank everyone who has stepped up to serve in government, no matter what position you're currently serving or attempting to serve. It's vital that our citizens have choices, and we give a round of applause for all the candidates and public servants who are here today. will be as follows. It will be based on the uh, position on the ballot. Each candidate will have a two-minute opening. Say whatever you want. I'll ask a few questions appropriate uh, for the offices that the candidates are vying for. Try to give a, an answer within a minute. Uh, candidates will also receive a two-minute close. If you go over, you'll hear this sound effect. Well, it's a little better. Maybe you'll hear the sound effect. There we go. All right. And that'll be your cue to wrap it up quickly. We won't make you stop right then, but try to try to finish uh, your sentence or so. Uh, okay, so the uh, first on the ballot is for United States Representative. There are three candidates on the ballot, including incumbent Republican Larry Bouchon of Warwick County. He is not here today, but his website is bouchonforcongress.com if you'd like to do uh, a little research on him. Uh, also, the Libertarian is Andrew Horning of Owen County. His website is Horning for Congress, not the word for, but the number for, dot com. So HorningforCongress.com. Uh, in the audience today, we do have the Democratic nominee, Ray McCormick of Knox County. His website is Ray McCormick for Congress dot com. And uh, Ray, you're on. You have two minutes to uh, give the uh, crowd your introduction, and uh, we'll touch base on a couple of questions and let you wrap it up after that. All right. Good afternoon, everyone, and I want to thank the city of Rockville and this wonderful facility for putting this on. I appreciate everybody coming. Who am I? I'm a fourth-generation farmer from Southern Knox County. I've worked all of my life for taking care of the land. I've worked with a ton of organizations on a ton of causes. Been to Washington, D.C. many times. I tried to do on my land what I advocate that every farmer does, and that's 100% no-till, 100% cover crops, native prairie grasses along every stream, pollinator habitat, wetlands for migratory birds. <clears throat> so my inspiration in life is trying to influence as many people across the country to take care of the land for future generations. And I've had the opportunity to do that by being a member of soil and water conservation districts and the Nature Conservancy and the National Wildlife Federation and many organizations that I've done that with. I now have the opportunity because my son is old enough to be running the combine today and taking care of the farm to spend 100% of my time listening to people, meeting with people throughout the 21 counties. My opponent, who's been in 12 years, says he's unbeatable, he doesn't come here, he doesn't come to any meetings, he doesn't come to Farm Bureau meetings, and he says he's unbeatable. My wife said, now run against him. So <laughs> this is my opportunity, and I'm a damn hard-working farmer and honest. So that's my qualifications. Thank you. Okay, Ray, well, uh, a couple of questions, I guess. Um, so at this point, uh, what's the number one issue on your mind when it comes to uh, what you would do as the next representative? Well, when you start out running, you know, you have a platform. You say, this is going to be my platform, and these are the most important things. But when you meet with people and talk with people, you find out that basically they want hope. 
that things are going to get better in our country. They're very concerned as the direction our country is going, the way politics is in Washington, D.C., how that's going to impact our country, or impact our state, or impact our county. The example of my opponent, he's been in there for a long time, so I'm advocating for term limits. You know, getting all this power and getting all this money shouldn't entitle you, like my opponent, to live in Washington, D.C. and not come back to Indiana. So 10 years as a congressman, two terms or 12 years as a senator, I think that helps us. The other thing that I think helps us is empowering women. So many of the issues we have now, we have a lot of men making those decisions. I'm more for women becoming leaders in this country and making a lot of the decisions that we have to face today. Okay, and you kind of led into that, uh, the Dobbs decision by the Supreme Court that overturned Roe versus Wade. <laughs> Uh, where where do you stand on that uh, issue when it comes to abortion and women's uh, reproductive rights? So when we talk about a platform, I was hoping that was something that I wouldn't have to talk a lot about because it's very contentious and people say some very nasty things about it. But I'm an honest person, so I'm going to say it how it is. I think what a woman can, a woman can do in her health care should be up to her and her physician to make the best decisions on what her future is and what her health decisions are. The husband is involved with that, so I don't want to leave him out because often it's a child, it's a fetus, it's a pregnancy that is his child too. So that family unit and that experienced doctor should be making that decision. I've had those decisions made in my family and now because of the help of the doctor who did the abortion on the 10-year-old, she helped my daughter, and now we have a beautiful red-headed nine-month-old grandson crawling on the floor because she helped my daughter get through a difficult loss of a baby, and she did the medical work. We want those experienced people, those doctors, to stay in Indiana and not say, i got to move out of the state. Ray, you were featured on the front page of the Indianapolis Star yesterday, and your uh, topic was all about climate change. I was surprised I didn't acknowledge that you were running for U.S. Congress, but give us your thoughts, especially since last week we had a hurricane that did record damage in the state of Florida. Climate change real, or is it overhyped? Absolutely not. And, and what I do as a farmer, Using cover crops, using no-till. So when you no, when you work the ground, you blow the carbon in the air. So farmers are one of the leading contributors to climate change and carbon dioxide. When you don't work the ground, you sequester the carbon in that. When you use cover crops like I do, you sequester the carbon the year round. So the only hope we have of not going over the tipping point, the only way we do it in such a massive scale to get the carbon dioxide out of the atmosphere is using photosynthesis, no-till, cover crops, trees, prairies, pasture land, sequester that carbon back into the soil so we grow more food, it's healthier, and we preserve the land, and it's not sustainability, it's building our soils so that we can feed our world's growing population. So climate change has always been top on my list. These other issues aren't going to be important if we don't have a planet that will sustain us. You have the option of a two-minute close. Well, you know, a lot of the issues that I get to talk about and meet with people, I think we all have a similar goal of a better quality of life in our communities. You know, we don't want our daughters and sons to move away. We want our grandchildren to want to stay here. We want to hold our populations into these communities. We don't want to chase away young people. Some of the decisions that are being made in this state, I feel like uh, some are going to move away. And so by better housing, clean water, a better environment, keeping our public schools, there's a whole combination of things that can make our communities a high quality place to live. So that people say, I want to live in Rockville, I want to live in Vincennes, 
I can afford a house there. They got great schools. So we're going to live and we're going to raise our family here. And to me, that generalizes and pulls together everything I'm working for. Okay. Anybody have a question in the audience for Mr. McCormick? Okay. Ray, thank you for coming today. We appreciate it. And I'll be around, so if anybody wants to visit, I'll be glad to. Thank you. And again, that's Ray McCormick, the Democrat nominee for Congress from Knox County. His website is raymccormickforcongress.com. Again, the other two appoint opponents, uh, Andrew Horning from Owen County, horningforcongress.com if you want to do some research, as well as the incumbent Republican Larry Bouchon, bouchonforcongress.com. I got to know him about 10 years ago when I was doing what you did, Ray, and uh, I know you're having lots of fun, and I say that tongue-in-cheek. <laughs> All right, so next on the list, Indiana State Senate District number 23 to replace uh, Phil Boots of uh, Crawfordsville and uh, Spencer Deary of uh, Tippecanoe County could not be here today. He is the Republican in the race, and neither could Democrat David Sanders. They both live in Tippecanoe County. I offered both to send me letters, and I thought about reading them both. I thought one was going to be here and one wasn't, but since they're both not here, uh, I will just point out that David wanted to mention uh, that he would have accepted, uh, but today is uh, Yom Kippur, the holiest day on the Jew Jewish calendar. So he's actually leading his congregation in Lafayette in prayer at this very moment. Uh, he claims that he's been doing a lot of door-to-door -door work in this area, and uh, he apparently is a um, associate professor of biological sciences at Purdue University, and he's also served on the uh, council in West Lafayette. And we would ask everybody to silence their phones, too, by the way. If you want to read more about David, go to davidsandersforindiana.com. And he's got a lot of information there that may help you decide on uh, whether you're going to support him or not. Uh, Spencer Deary uh, grew up in a small rural town, son of an elementary school principal and public school teacher. He and his wife, Julia, have been married for 15 years and made their home in Tippecanoe <coughs> County, where they're raising three children who attend public schools. Uh, he actually works at uh, Purdue University. He's a public policy advisor, the former governor, and now uh, Purdue president, uh, Mitch Daniels. And you can go to spencerdeary.com for more information. So we uh, uh, wish them both good luck. Now let's move on to Indiana State Representative. The District 42 race, uh, the incumbent, is Republican Alan Morrison of Clay County. And uh, Alan is here. So, Alan, you have the floor for two minutes or more. Actually, more. Okay. Thank you, Dave. Thank you. Hello, everybody. Uh, thank you very much for coming out. This is uh, into the chamber for opening up this beautiful space. This is really nice. Uh, and the food, the lunch was excellent. So, uh, so I've been the our state representative for the last ten years. It's been one of the greatest honors of my adult life for sure. Um, I've met so many amazing people during it, and I do not mean the governors and the, the congressmen, but I mean the people going door to door and meeting the, uh, the World War II veterans and the people who volunteer, the people who really make uh, our communities uh, work and run. And, and whenever I'm done with uh, uh, being a, your legislator, that, is, that will be the thing that I take, uh, take away the most. Um, over the last 10 years, I've, I've worked on a lot of issues. I've really uh, focus a lot on energy issues, uh, natural resource issues, election law, and also gaming issues. Um, and obviously, economic development is, has been a, is, is, a, is a big it's a big piece of the pie that we work on. Um, some of the some of the, the positives that that I've seen that I've been a big part of and been very integral of. Uh, over the years is, uh, you know, when we look at, again, where we live, it's West Central Indiana. Um, we all live in maybe multiple different little communities. And so when we have a win for West Central Indiana, normally it's a win for all of us. Um, we've done a lot of work down at Indiana State University. Uh, the addition of the Health and Human Services uh, building and, and uh, that increasing that major there, which helps all of our communities by by uh, um, having more health care professionals, especially when we talk about rural health care, how important that is and how that affects all of us uh, here in this room. Uh, the the um, uh, convention center, which has just opened up, which brings in folks from all over this uh, mid the Midwest. Um, they already have a, a full schedule. 
And I know uh, that there are people that work in that convention center that live throughout West Central Indiana. Um, and uh, it's, it's projects like that that we need to continue to obviously work on, um, working with the community, the legislature, uh, to, to help bring those in. One of the biggest things that we're working on right now, which will be a huge help to the agricultural industry throughout Indiana, and, and this area in particular, is Wabash Valley Resources. Uh, that plant will is, is almost through the permitting phase with EPA. Um, it's what's called a level six permit. It is the, the longest and most expensive permit to get. Um, once they have that uh, um, done, it will employ about 800 uh, construction jobs for about two years. It's a 24 to 30 month construction process. Um, it will employ about 150 full-time uh, employees at an average salary of $75,000 and it will produce enough ammonia uh, fertilizer for two-thirds of the state of Indiana. Um, on top of that then the other product that will come from that is hydrogen which will be part of the hydrogen economy which is the next generation of how electricity and power is generated within this country and we are working very hard from the infrastructure bill that, uh, that uh, was passed last year um, there will be multiple, about a dozen hydrogen hubs throughout the country, and we're working very hard to have West Central Indiana be one of those hydrogen hubs. Thank you, Representative. Um, representative, what's, what's your most proudest accomplishment being a state representative? If you want to pick on a, a particular piece of legislation you shepherded through or perhaps was uh, very involved in. Uh, um, and that's a sound... Uh, uh, I guess not to brag here, but there are a lot of positive things that, that we've done and I've been a part of. One of the ones that I can go back to right off the top of my head is, is school safety. And uh, obviously that is something that is extremely important. When we send our children to school, we want to know that they're going to come back the same way that when, when they got on a bus or when we drop them off. And when we did school resource officers uh, about eight years ago, I, was, uh, I, I had a piece of legislation, an amendment that went into that bill that was specifically for small schools and for them to be able to share resources and money to, to be able to have uh, school resource officers. And it was something that had been, for whatever reason, it had been left out of that bill and it was really only covering middle and larger sized schools. So, uh, you know, obviously, being able to, to represent and stand up for small rural schools was very important. Okay. Um, Representative, recently the uh, legislature met for a special session during the summer. Uh, it followed the uh, Roe versus Wade Dobbs decision, and Indiana was the first uh, state in the union to uh, pass legislation after the Supreme Court uh, uh, removed Roe versus Wade. Um, a couple of weeks later, not only did some of the uh, state's largest employers uh, were critical of, of the legislation and thought it may have been too extreme, uh, as well as uh, Indiana University Medical says it may be tough to keep and track doctors due to that legislation. Do you have any regrets? Did, did the legislature move too fast on this uh, very touchy subject? No, absolutely not. Um, given, the, given the choice, uh, or the ability to save life, to stand up for life, I would do that every time. Um, I have no regrets at all that we move forward. We did the right thing. Uh, businesses coming out and um, stating political, uh, um, their political points as a, as a corporation or as a business uh, is, something, is, is something that we, quite honestly, we gave into a handful of years ago uh, with RIFRA, and I hope we never give into uh, these com corporations and companies that, again like that. Uh, we did what was what was right uh, as a Republican caucus or as a Republican candidate in our caucus We have run on pro-life issues for decades and to be able to follow through with that promise to our constituents I'm certainly proud of that. Okay. Thank you. I'm um, trying to figure out what's the best if we let you do your thing and you both get closes at the end or do you care? That's fine. Yep. It doesn't matter. Okay. So have a seat then and we'll let Mark go in case you guys want to banner a little bit. We'll, <laughs> we'll, keep, the, we'll keep the punching uh, gloves away and all that. But uh, Mark Spellbring is the Democratic nominee for State Representative District 42. And uh, Mark, you have a two minute opening. Okay. And uh, I'll just point out I've got a brochure probably laying around here someplace that you get a chance to see. And, know a little bit more about me and many people here I'm sure are already familiar with me obviously I live in Rockville 
uh, in Park County. I've lived here for 27 years, lived in Vermilion County before that, originally from Clay County. And I was even in Vigo for a while. So as I point out in here, I've lived in four of the five counties, and there's not very much of Fountain County that's in it. I actually run a, run a track work there in Fountain County part of the time. So, But that's a little bit about my background growing up on the farm. Ray talked about conservation things. Our farm uh, featured a lot of conservation features over there, a conservation tool in many, many years over there. Uh, and after going to school over there in public education, and then eventually I worked in Florida for a while in, in extension, and then worked in extension in Vermillion County and here in Park County. So very familiar with the entire area, and uh, I think I have a good feel for what people in the area are, are mostly involved in. Uh, as I think about issues, and you can see here I, I point out public education being the number one issue in my view. Uh, I think some of the things that have taken place in the legislature in the last actually several years have been detrimental to the proper support of public education. I put together something that kind of talks about the three R's, you know, we think reading, writing, arithmetic. And what I said was respect teachers. And we actually had a discussion in Terre Haute at a uh, candidate forum about how critical it is that teachers not be disrespected in the schools, not public schools not be disrespected, that it seems to be driving people out of the profession for one thing. Uh, restoring the proper funding, and there again you get into the situation, and some as we discussed last night about vouchers and how much of the money that is available is pulled off for private schools and charter schools and such versus the public schools that have to take everyone. They basically <coughs> deal with everyone. And then the other one is local control, return local control. I appreciate some of the things that the legislature has done to try to be positive in supporting schools, but I think in particular in the last you know, a couple of sessions they've gotten to the point of trying to micromanage and control and you know, basically tell teachers how to teach history and how to do some of those things. So I think that local control would be better than public schools. Okay. Um, Mark, here's a hypothetical. So let's say you're successful in your race in defeating Representative Morrison. Organization Day pops up a couple of weeks after uh, the November election and uh, representatives start filing bills up in the clerk's office. Uh, what would be your first uh, piece of legislation that you would uh, like to uh, propose if you were the new state representative? Actually, I think probably the first thing, and this is actually something that I think probably should have been done when they had the special session. The special session was called in July. It was actually supposed to be dealing with uh, the budget surplus. But try to think about how you do that. We had a discussion on this last night. The gas tax is dedicated to funding for roads. The sales tax on gas is not all dedicated to that. A good bit of that's going into the general fund. So I think something that would make sense would be to basically suspend or possibly just do away with the sales tax that is charged on gasoline. Now, part of that goes to the general fund that has a $6 billion surplus. Part of it does go to some dedicated funds that deal with road maintenance and such. But there's enough money in that surplus, so the second piece of it would be suspending the gas tax, the sales tax on gasoline, and then using excess money or surplus money in the general fund to basically make those particular highway maintenance funds whole, so people get a benefit, so the deficit will go down a little bit, but the road maintenance money would still be there. So I think that would be a good, good balance to strike. Okay. Um, what do you see as one of the biggest issues besides education that you would focus on? What, what's a problem that Hoosiers face that you'd like to tackle? Well, I, I just touched on the one, I think, in trying to deal with uh, the, the high costs. I think we have significant issues as well. As you mentioned, we're, we're fortunate here. We have excellent broadband right here, but there are a lot of places that don't. There was a discussion uh, last week. The lieutenant governor was here. Park County has been identified as an area kind of primed for growth coming out of it. COVID-19 situation because of a lot of positive quality of life things, but you need that good, strong infrastructure for people to be able to basically work from anywhere. And as we think about changes in overall economy and how things work, I mean, years ago people found a job and they lived wherever the job was. Now a lot of people want to find a place they want to live. And Park County is an attractive place. The entire area in West Central Indiana is an attractive place to live. But maybe the jobs aren't there, and maybe one of the restrictions on that is being able to have access to the infrastructure that you need, broadband being one piece of it, but also I think we need to be looking at basic utilities, 
uh, to be able to have, for example, people wanting to live in the small towns that we have instead of going out and plowing up the corn, or tearing up cornfields and taking a house out there to strengthen our small towns. Okay. Uh, if you'll take a seat for a moment, Representative Morrison, you get a two minute close now. Uh, any questions first? Or? By the, oh, I'm sorry, yes, yeah, so was there any questions for uh, Mark Spellbring? And we'll make this as free flowing as we can <laughs> since you guys are probably the the highlighted race of both of you being here, but uh, feel free to, or if you've got a question for Mark and vice versa, I don't care, that's fine too. Uh, I would, can, I, can I make a remark? Absolutely, <laughs> absolutely. Sit, sit on, <laughs> 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 um, I thought we were going to sit down. You know, sort of <laughs> so I, I would just say, uh, so obviously education is always one of the, the, the bigger uh, subjects. It's over 50% of our budget. And this is a budget year coming up, so whenever something garners that much money, it's going to garner that much attention. Uh, I'm proud of what we have done over the years with funding, uh, funding K through 12, and and um, and I, I like Mark a lot. I respect you a lot. But um, your second R was what re restore funding. Restore funding. Oh my gosh! Um, twice now I have voted. Uh, for over a, a billion dollar increase in in funding for K through 12, um, we have we passed legislation uh, to specifically increase uh, teacher pay. We passed legislation uh, to work with schools to get more money to the classroom. <clears throat> it's interesting. We we have data out there that shows that some school corporations will get. Uh, as little as 48, 50% of the money that's allocated to them down actually to the classroom. While some of those school corporations do a great job where they're getting 75 to 80% to the classroom. And so there are other issues out there than just, just money. It's also how do we make, how, how do we as a legislature, as a government, working with school corporations make them uh, make that money that is that is going to them be of best use. And so, uh, while are we doing everything perfect? Absolutely not. Um, and I'm glad that's why we can at least go back every other year and, and address those uh, those issues with the budget. But I I'll stand here and, and be proud of what we have done to to get money to the classroom so that every single uh, child in Indiana gets the best education possible. And Alan, I'll still give you a close here. But Mark, if you'd like to counter that or make a comment about maybe a question you might have for Alan, feel free to jump in on that. No, I, I, the legislature has come forward with a good bit of money. There's one kind of caveat that I would add. The last time when it came through with increasing the, the minimum pay for starting teachers and such, is I believe through much of the session they would talk about we would love to be able to do that, but we don't have the money. We'd love to do that, but we don't have the money. The money then showed up because at the federal level, the money was part of the uh, Relief Act that basically brought that amount of money in, and I think it's what made it possible for them to do that. I, and I don't dis disagree with the point of trying to get as much of this in the classroom as possible, and I've seen some of the different school corporations and, and how they do that. But I think in many cases, uh, you know, the, you can have local control and try to be able to get that funneled into the right way to be able to do that. Uh, so that as much of it gets there as possible. There's certainly a lot of things pulling on the local school corporations and basically trying to deal with a lot of uh, people that may be unprivileged and such. So there could be a variation in that by the nature of the corporation, whether or not it may tend to be a more equitable corporation versus one that has a lot more problems and you know, maybe drug substance abuse and some of those kinds of things is going to create more stress and more strain and more need for counselors and some of those types of things that may be there as well that you're going to have in some corporations. That may explain some of that. Okay. Anybody in the audience have a question for either of these gentlemen? Okay. Um, Alan, if you want your two-minute close now, take it. Great. <clears throat> uh, so, uh, you know, I, I certainly appreciate uh, everybody's time here. I will ask you for your vote. Um, I believe that I've done a good job over the last uh, 10 years representing the people of House District 42. I would tell you, again, um, not everything I've done is perfect. I could probably go back and find a couple votes that I think to myself, huh, I wonder why I voted for that or I wonder why I voted against that. Uh, but I do uh, do my best to represent uh, everybody at District 42 as well as I can. Um, I'll, con I'll continue to push for conservative values, uh, fiscal responsibility, 
And, and at the end of the day, I, my goal is to make Indiana the best place to live, work, and learn. And so I would certainly appreciate your vote on November 8th. And Alan, do you have a political website or your legislative website you want to plug or anything? I, I do not have a website. I, okay. I just painted it. So. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All right, very good. Thank you. Alan Morrison, a uh, Republican candidate. And then uh, Mark, you have the, the two minute close. Okay, thank you. And I do appreciate Alan being here. Uh, there have been some of the get togethers we've had, and we're not able to make it. And uh, so I appreciate your, your presence here and the opportunity to discuss some of these kinds of things. I put a little piece in here about why change representatives, and I guess there's two pieces that I have a concern with the legislature. One is the supermajority. We've had a supermajority in the House for 10 years, and the Senate for a lot longer than that. And I, I try to think about how do you make an analogy to that. It's almost like having a car with two accelerators and no brake, you know, is because if there's not any alternative views that have any chance to be presented, you know, in a forceful fashion, then you may have someone come up with an idea and you just take off and run with it and don't think it through all the way. So I think that's, we'd be better served, in my opinion, without having the super majorities that we've had. And then when you look specifically at my opponent, uh, you know, I think in many cases he has not been out and about and coming to things like the Cracker Barrel here and the Cracker Barrels in Jericho and such over the last period of time. I know he worked at it very hard initially. I have to say he worked very hard initially because he beat me early on. <laughs> if he hadn't worked hard, that wouldn't have happened. Uh, but I don't know that he's been in touch with people as much more recently and engaged with people in finding out what their concerns are. And then the piece that goes along with that, because what we want to do is represent the concerns of local people, is then what do you do when you get there? And are you representing the moderate views that I think are most common throughout West Central Indiana or being more on the extreme end? And I think being more on the extreme end is where he has come down on some of these votes. And so I think that's the difference. I was added to the ballot late. Nobody filed in the spring in the primary. I thought I would have a chance to at least express some concerns and raise some of the issues. And so that's why I decided to go ahead and run for this. And I would appreciate your vote. Representative Morrison, do you want 30 seconds to counter his claim about lack of attendance of some of these events at all? And I'll give you 30 more seconds too, or, or a minute, whatever you want. No, no, I, so the great thing about our legislature is that we're, we're a citizen legislature. And uh, um, most of us have full-time jobs and families, which also uh, are extremely important. Um, I, 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 uh, I, this past summer, for instance, anybody who has any uh, children on, on travel ball um, can appreciate that I spent 12 out of 13 or 14 weekends um, traveling to uh, travel baseball while also doing um, my, my, my daytime job. Um, I am extremely out and about. Um, my job uh, uh, predicates it, um, and I work throughout all. Of, I, I work throughout all of West Central Indiana, from down from Vincennes all the way up to uh, up to Lafayette. Um, and so I am in in and about our, our community a lot. Constituent services is something that I, I can absolutely hang my hat on. Um, we get I get a lot of email and mail and co uh, contacts um, on a daily and weekly basis. Um, I take that all very seriously. Uh, there's so many different instances that, that one I can't talk about because of uh, confidential reasons and, and things that people that I've helped people with. Um, so um, if, if, uh, if I miss a Saturday uh, Cracker Barrel, um, it's not because I don't want to come and talk to people. Normally, it's because I'm somewhere out of the out of the area or with my child or with my kids at an event. And quite honestly, I think everybody here would agree. Um, if I have to choose between a Cracker Barrel and going to watch my son play baseball or my daughter run, I'm, uh, to choose uh, to, go to, to go to my kids' event will certainly be uh, um, one of the, the decisions that I, I I have made and will continue to make. Um, but again, um, the the interactions that I have. Um, with people throughout the district on a very uh, common basis is, is uh, has started back when I first ran, continues today, um, and, I, and I will, I want to stress one more time, the constituent services that me and my office uh, um, provide um, have done a lot of good, and, and I've worked with a lot of people I'm very proud of. And Representative, to yep. clarify, who's your employer? Uh, it's called Mall Hops. Okay, so you're in Lafayette. Yeah. Right. Well, so we have a Lafayette office, an Indianapolis office, and a Terre Haute office. Gotcha. Yep. Okay, thank you. And then you get two more minutes, Mark, if you want. <laughs>
Well, I appreciate Al and Ed again some of the things about that, but I think a lot of you know that I'm certainly involved in the community with many different activities here, and I'm also involved in uh, Vermillion County still and Clay County, where we have a farm, and my brother Hunter is hay over there, so I'm certainly very much successful. And I'm not fully employed. I'm not full-time employed, you know, working on part-time in the Sentinel, so I would have time to devote to some of these things. The other piece that I talked about on that was extremism and some of the views, and I just want to mention a couple of things that have happened in the legislature, and in particular related to schools. And most of you have heard the one is the idea that was proposed at one time about teachers would have to basically create their lesson plan and post that, I think somebody said last time, by August the 4th or something like that before the school year even started. And that's what they were kind of supposed to be going through so that the legislature would know what they were going to be doing in all of this. I don't think that made a lot of sense. I think that was an example of a street, an extreme type of thing that did not make it through, but that was proposed and was part of that. The other thing, and I know one piece that we specifically disagree on, is uh, Representative Morrison has been favoring making school board elections partisan. And that's something that I think would be inappropriate. I think it looks, works very well having that be a nonpartisan office. And so I think that's something that we can kind of hang our hat on. As I looked at this as well, I did think I should probably should mention, you know, I have the background in agriculture and then also and the, the background in the Farm Bureau Ag Elect and also served as the town clerk trader for Rockville. So it's a little unusual to have an ag background and a municipal background, but I've got both of those and, and the energy to try to work for the people of Western Indiana. Thank you. Okay, Representative Alan Morrison, the Republican, Mark Spellbring, the Democrat challenger. Let's give an applause to both of you gentlemen. Okay, we have two other contested races on the ballot in Park County this year. District 2 County Commissioner, the incumbent is Republican Bruce Hartman. It's my understanding he had a conflict today and could not attend. Uh, Democrat challenger is Alice Swain. So, Alice, the floor is yours. Hello, everyone. I'm Alice Swain. I'm a farmer, too. I think that we're sending a lot of farmers to Congress, it sounds like, and to our local <laughs> government. But I think they couldn't get better people than farmers. And the concerns that, the, that our people have already expressed about education and about infrastructure are the main reasons that I became active in politics. I'm very worried about the way our county roads have deteriorated over the last 20 years. The way they patch them now, we end up with cobblestones. They don't roll that out. We used to, I remember 40 or 50 years ago, they had a little roller, it wasn't very big. They'd unload that thing off on the county road for the day. The other guys come out there and put the patching down, and that guy came along and rolled it out. That works so much better than what they're doing now. I don't know why they do it the way they do. Um, and that's an old, old memory, I know. I've been around a few years, too. Uh, the other thing is that, you know, when you talk about education, and infrastructure is part of our problem with our education here in this rural area. So many kids don't have internet at home. I don't have internet at home. I did until this spring, and all of a sudden, our um, I had a satellite connection, which was very good, but that's all I could get. And uh, that went. And I waited two weeks, called them a couple of times, they never got it fixed. So I was going to pay 100 something a month for an internet connection that doesn't work. I don't watch television, so the only thing they were going to get out of me was the internet connection. Uh, so I, there's kids I found out later through my strat that uh, kids went to the fire station to use their internet because they were in the same fix I was. They were required to do this work because they weren't in school because of COVID. They had no access. I think that's a crime. And the government is making us do all kinds of things online. I can't file my own taxes because I don't have the internet. I used to prepare taxes for 30 years for other people. Okay, that knocked me out of that business. Is that fair? I'm not the only person out there who feels like they have been tromped on by the government. Government regulations, the inability of, of me to do anything about it distresses me. It distresses me when I hear about kids who are not able to do their schoolwork because of the way our government has just forgotten the rural areas. You know, they don't care. Uh, I know one of the things that Ray has said is, why not have REMC, you know, just like, a, or a corporation like REMC, step in and provide internet service that is controlled by the government, regulated like a public utility. You know, that would be fair to everyone, I think. 
why don't we do that? Why hasn't it been suggested? Ray suggested it. Uh, Ray gave me the idea. I hadn't thought about RMC doing it. So. Well, I gave you an extra minute just to clarify okay. since we took a little bit of Bruce's time. But I, I can give you some answers to that. I was in the legislature when telephones were deregulated. <laughs> I voted against it, okay? But my biggest fear is what we're seeing in places like Park County right now. You know, it, competition seems to be working in places like Indianapolis, Carmel, Columbus, and Fort Wayne. But you can see our lack of cell phone coverage. And in some parts of the county, we don't have uh, complete internet. So uh, I, I hope that that'll get fixed over time. But it seems like we've been waiting in some of these areas of rural Indiana. Uh, the uh, infrastructure plan that did pass federally a few months ago, and I noticed this in Clay County recently, they are to, they have dollars in that infrastructure plan uh, that will help uh, bring more uh, high-speed internet to some parts that are lacking it. So um, I hope they get phones too, because I no longer have phone service that's worth anything. I think, well, yeah. <laughs> I, I, I tell my friends when they come to beautiful Park County for the Bridge Festival, don't expect to use your cell phone because yeah. it's not going to work, is it? So We have a beautiful, beautiful home here. And I don't want to leave it. And I don't want our kids to leave it. You know, that's the reason we need this infrastructure. And that's the only reason, really, that's what got me into politics. I'm no politician. I'm sure no public speaker. And I'm sure you know it. Well, so. <laughs> <laughs> Let me ask you this. What would be the one thing that you would focus on um, as a commissioner if you were successful in this campaign? What would you do? Finding different? out about how we could get the infrastructure fixed. You know, I don't know what has caused us to be where we are. Because like everyone, a lot of people, I just go in my own little groove. I like to work. I want to come and go every day. I like my routine. I'm an accountant. We like routine. And uh, so I wasn't paying a whole heck of a lot of attention over all these decades that all this has occurred. And I need to get in there and find out what's going on. I don't know what I could do. The first thing I would have to do is get educated better. I'll have to admit it. Yeah, the cost of asphalt is the biggest issue, I think, is yeah. that a lot of commissioners are facing. Yeah, but they could roll that surface out. They should have that, you know, well, I'll, I'll get off that. Okay, um, let's see. Um, well, you have a close. Take two more minutes if you'd like to say anything you want. Okay, thank you. Uh, I just hope that all this rhetoric can lead to something that will help our communities, help our families stay here in our communities. I have kids and grandkids and... I'm probably only 10 years away from having, wait a minute, i got grandkids too, and great-grandkids, so 10 years away from them having kids. <laughs> and I want them to be happy, I want them to be healthy. Uh, we're talking about the way agriculture is. We are not total no-till, we are partial no-till. Uh, they work in some of the cover, they leave most of it there as they can. We talk about this all the time out there, Nancy's on me constantly about we need to go total no-till. And when I hear Ray talk about it too, I think, okay, maybe I need to talk to our farmers some more. So, you know, I, there's a lot of things that come up when we have these kinds of meetings. Nancy tried to have educational meetings all summer that were not very well attended. It seems like people think, boy, well, they're gonna be asked for money, possibly, you know. But we need information, we need to pay attention to one another's ideas, we need to have respectful rhetoric with one another. We should not hate one another when we talk about these ideas. We need to reach out to one another with understanding. There's a, a group called Better Angels that is a mix of Republicans and Democrats who try to work together. And that's another thing that got me originally interested in politics. Because before I thought, oh, that's just a bunch of people running around fighting with each other all the time. You know, that's the way I looked at politicians. Uh, and I'm sorry. <laughs> uh, I'm finding out that we need to give them a lot more respect as well as our teachers. Uh, I go to church with two teachers and they talk about the problems of kids who are out of control in the classroom and they don't have aids to help them out. Uh, they're both teachers in grade school, one's kindergarten, I think. So, okay. okay. Alice Flame, the uh, Democratic candidate for District 2 County Commissioner and her the and she is challenging Bruce Hartman, the Republican incumbent. So let's hear it for Alice for being here today. So okay, for Park County Council District 3, the incumbent is Republican Jim Howard. Is Jim here today? Okay, the challenger is a Democrat Liam Moeller. Is that pronounced correctly? Is Liam here? So neither one are here. Okay, well, I guess that's going to wrap up our event pretty quick.
I failed to mention this on the WAXI website, 104.9 WAXI. Mark was on a Focus on the Community feature recently, and that is on the website. Alan's going to come record one tomorrow, which will air this weekend at 6 a.m. on WAXI, or it'll be uploaded by Monday. So if you want more information on these two, it's available. Ray did one a few weeks ago, so that one's still up on the website. And uh, if I can get uh, his opponents uh, before the election day, we'll have them on as well. But uh, on behalf of the Park County Chamber of Commerce and WAXI, I want to thank everybody for uh, coming out today. And uh, be sure to encourage your friends and neighbors to vote for the candidates of your choice and have a safe and uh, hopefully a beautiful Covered Bridge Festival coming up here very soon. Thank you for being here.